most of us learn that um, the way that we need to live our lives and use our minds or our intelligence is by focusing in on the descriptions that we have about our experience. And um, when I look at my experience, I can see that the descriptions I have about what's going on are continually changing. Um, you know, there's no way that I can fix my experience in place. I have one thought and then it's followed by another thought and um, maybe then a physical sensation, something happening in the body and then a rush of emotion, you know, I might feel happy or sad or bored or tired or and then there'll be a thought about something that happened 20 years ago and, and, and so what I can see by looking at my experience is that the descriptions about it are always changing and um, and the training that I had or, or the way that I'd learned I needed to use my mind was that I needed to focus in on these ever-changing descriptions and then try and do something with them and part of that um, understanding that I learned were that there were certain descriptions and experiences were the ones that I should be having and should be looking for and see seeking after and that there were others that I should be avoiding and so those are usually called positive and negative experiences so the positive ones are the ones that I should be having so um, I should be feeling happy I should be feeling um, contented um, and I shouldn't be feeling irritated or um, sad or lonely or angry and so the process that I'd learned was that I needed to be constantly aware of my experience and if I had these positive descriptions then I needed to work out how I could do my best to hold those in place and if I had the negative experiences, the sadness, the loneliness, the irritation, then I needed to look at what was the cause of the sadness, the loneliness and the irritation and how I could get rid of that. And um, that's what I spent my whole life doing, searching after happiness and trying to avoid or get rid of sadness or anger or the, the negative things. And this way of using our energy and our time and our intelligence means that we are constantly busy because the descriptions are always changing. And so there is this constant ongoing process of self-analysis, <coughs> of self-referencing. I like this, I don't like this, I agree with this, I don't agree with this, I'm happy, I'm sad. And then working out what we do to change our situation or try and hold it in place. And the results that I saw from this way of approaching life in my own case were that I never quite felt comfortable with where I was. There was always a search for something more, just a little bit more that would make me feel complete or allow me to relax completely. And so I looked in many different places to try and find that sense of completion or satisfaction or, or, or meaning in life. And then I uh, and I, I read and listened to many incredible things and enjoyed lots of different um, teachings and approaches but I still, the search continued. Um, and then when I came to the Balanced View training, I was given um, a suggestion that I'd never been given before. And, and that was just for a short moment, just to allow my mind to be exactly as it is. Allow my experience to be exactly as it is, without trying to change it in any way. And this was um, very new for me. I hadn't ever been given that suggestion before. And I was, well, that's, that's different. I've never heard that. And, and what, well, how do I do that? And then the response was, well, just for a short moment, relax the need to do anything with anything that's occurring or happening for you. So it's a short moment of just relaxing and recognizing the open sky-like nature of your mind allowing the descriptions, this constantly changing flow of experience, just to flow on by. And so I, I tested that out, just for a short moment, and you can try this now. Just stop thinking. And recognize that there is an openness, there is an alertness. There's something that's aware of everything that's going on. And in that short moment of just pausing the descriptions, I gave myself an opportunity to recognize that this was naturally present. And then the habit or the, 
the way that I'd learned to use my mind was so strong that immediately another thought pops into the mind stream and I focus in on that one. And, and this habit or this way of using our mind is really to collapse our mind into these descriptions. So it's a constant process of collapsing into fixed reference points. So those fixed reference points may be things like, I shouldn't feel irritated, or I should feel happy. And um, that collapsing and that process can often happen so quickly that we're not even aware that we're doing it. That habit has been something that we've been um, practicing for so long that it takes a whole support system to see, for us to see and for me to see that I did have a different way and a different choice in that I could use my mind just to rest naturally, to rest in its natural state of complete perceptual openness to enjoy this clarity of mind that was like a clear sky. And the way to do this was to take these short moments, these instantaneous acknowledgements of the openness of mind, and then repeat that many times, just throughout my day, whenever I naturally remembered. And so I took that suggestion and I tested it out, and the results were immediate. There was an immediate sense of openness and ease every time I acknowledged this brilliant brightness of mind and I allowed the thoughts and the emotions and the sensations just to flow on by. There was this immediate recognition of, um, of ease, of benefit, because not only did I feel more comfortable with what was occurring, but I also saw it much more clearly. Rather than being caught up in all of the descriptions, trying to work out now, why I'm feeling irritated and what's the cause of my irritation and I don't like feeling it's a sign that there's something wrong or why am I happy and you know I need to hold on to this happiness and work out why I'm feeling happy and try and hold those circumstances in place instead I can just relax and be exactly as I am whether I'm irritated or I'm happy or I'm feeling something in between whether I have a feeling a sensation in the body or whether I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch. Each of these experiences or thoughts or streams of data is an opportunity for benefit, is an opportunity to recognize it as inseparable from open intelligence. And this is a key, key point. In a short moment, what I recognize instinctively is that whatever I'm experiencing, whatever the stream of data, it is inseparable from the open intelligence in which and as which it's occurring. Like the breeze is inseparable from the air. I can't separate out the breeze from the air. And actually the breeze is the dynamic energy of the air. So the data, our experience, is the dynamic beneficial energy of open intelligence. And hearing things like that for me was beautiful, but what was actually key was the direct instinctive recognition. And so the practice is to take short moments of this instinctive recognition of the natural presence of open intelligence, inseparable from whatever you're experiencing, and then to repeat that throughout your day. And for me that was incredible because it was something that I could test for myself and gain certainty and assurance in. And some things became obviously open intelligence I immediately and very quickly. But the habit of collapsing into certain descriptions, certain fixed reference points with some things was so strong, and I'd been doing it for decades, that it seemed like I couldn't allow them to be as they were. They seemed so real and so true, these descriptions. They seemed to have this separate and independent nature that for me what was really important was to see that there was a support network that meant that I could increase my capacity to rely on open intelligence. And, um, and I remember coming and reading and hearing outrageous claims, things like um, if you um, participate in the Balanced View training, what's called the Four Mainstays, this support network, it is guaranteed that open intelligence will become more obvious in your life outrageous how dare they claim such a thing and um, and so definitely lots of buttons were pushed when I came to this training about lots of different things but there was something in me that was also intrigued by what I heard 
and I was seeing this direct experience in, 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 in my own life, this, this result of testing the suggestions. So I just continued to show up, tested the instructions and began to participate in the rest of the support. And much to my surprise, open intelligence did become increasingly obvious in everyday life. And the more I showed up, the more obvious it became. So I was like, oh, this is great. I want, I want more of this. You know, I, I want this relaxed openness in all circumstances, with all data streams, in all relationships. And as I showed up, as I participated in the different trainings and the foundation training of the 12 empowerments is just, oh, it's so potent. You really get to see in detail this habit of collapsing into fixed reference points and seeing fixed reference points and ideas that I didn't even know I was collapsing into. It was like, oh wow, I, I really believe that, don't I? And I, I reference that and use that to understand what's going on instead of relying on open intelligence. So, so just take it one step at a time, one day at a time, rely on open intelligence for short moments and see what else is here to support you, all of the media that just empowers this, this recognition in your own experience. And then just continue on. It, it's so simple and yet so profound and, and practical and, and, and really, really powerful way to live that anybody can do.